<gasps> no, no, no. I'm not crazy. At least not yet. Sometimes I feel like I'm on my way to the loony bin. You know, cooking for my husband, Joe, is really hard. After the doctor finished with all those tests, he found out that Joe has type 2 diabetes. And people with any form of diabetes have to keep their blood pressure down to 130 over 80 or below in order to reduce the risk of heart disease. Oh, that's our miracle baby. I had her at six months, but God and some really good doctor saved her. Excuse me, I'll be right back. I'm sorry. She just needed a little hug from mommy. Now what was I saying? Oh, yeah, I was telling you about my husband's high blood pressure and his diabetes. And I probably don't have to tell you that the doctor said that he's probably in the beginning stages of kidney disease. And because of that, we have to keep his blood pressure down to 125 over 75. Excuse me again. I've got to get this phone. Hello? Oh, hi, Gus. What am I doing? I'm talking to myself and trying to figure out what to make Joe for dinner. Yeah, you don't have to tell me that. I know what the doctor said to do. Increase his fruit and vegetable intake. Increase his dietary fiber intake. Decrease his fat intake. Decrease his saturated fat intake even more so. And some other stuff. Hey, I know all of that. Listen, I have to go. I'll talk to you when I'm in a better mood. Bye. Don't you hate those people that think they know everything about everything when they know nothing about anything? Seems that she would know that since I love my husband and I want him to stay alive, that I would take some time and read those brochures. But it's still kind of hard following all those guidelines in preparing its food. For an example, these are some of the commandments to diet that I try to adhere to when I'm preparing meals for Joe. I serve him at least two cups of fruit each day while remaining within his 2,000 calories or less range. I read those little papers that come out every Wednesday so that I'll know what fruits are on sale. I try to buy fruits like berries, red grapes, and dates that have high antioxidant capacity. You like that word, antioxidant? I had to look it up to see what it actually meant. An antioxidant is a substance that prevents damage caused by oxidation, which occurs naturally during metabolism. Anyway, back to my husband's diet. I also serve Joe about two and a half cups of vegetables per day. Now the nutritionalist at the hospital suggested that I serve him dark green vegetables, such as green spinach, broccoli, and others. Orange colored vegetables, such as carrots, squash, and legumes, it means beans, such as white beans, kidney beans, and lima and or pinto beans, and starchy vegetables such as corn and potatoes. I also try to serve him three or more ounces of whole grain products per day. This includes whole grain bread, crackers, whole grain pasta or rice, and even cereal with milk. I try to keep Joe away from those sugary beverages that we used to drink. So instead, I give him two to three cups of low fat or fat free milk every day. Let's see, what else do I do? Oh yeah, as I mentioned before, I limit those fats. And in fact, such things as saturated fats, such as animal fats, butter, and some oils, we don't have in the house at all. Let me tell you about some of the fats. Saturated fats are fats that contain mostly saturated fatty acids. Saturated fatty acids are found mainly in animal fats, including dairy products. Only two vegetable fats are saturated, palm and coconut oil. There are saturated fats in meats and whole dairy products like milk, cheese, cream, and ice cream. There are also polyunsaturated fats. 
Polyunsaturated fats contain large amounts of polyunsaturated fatty acids, or PUFAs. Polyunsaturated fatty acids are so named because of the presence of two or more double bonds that are places along the carbon chain where the fatty acid is not saturated with hydrogen. Polyunsaturated fats are liquid at room temperature and remain in liquid form even when refrigerated or frozen. Polyunsaturated fats are divided into two families, the omega-3 fat and the omega-6 fat. Other polyunsaturated fats are sunflower seed, cotton seed, soybean oils, etc. There are also monosaturated fats, which are considered to be probably the healthiest type of general fat. This type of fat has none of the adverse effects associated with saturated fats trans fats, or omega-6 polyunsaturated vegetable oils. Type of monosaturated fats are olive oil, grapeseed oil, hazelnuts, almonds, Brazil nuts, cashews, avocado, sesame seeds, and pumpkin seeds. There are also trans fat, which is made when manufacturers add hydrogen to vegetable oil, a process called hydrogenation. Hydrogenation increases the shelf life and flavor stability of foods containing these fats. Trans fats can be found in vegetable shortenings, some margarines, crackers, cookies, snack foods, and other foods made with or fried in partially hydrogenated oils. Unlike other fats, the majority of trans fat is formed when food manufacturers turn liquid oils into solid fats like shortening and hard margarine. A small amount of trans fat is found naturally, primarily in dairy products, some meat, and other animal-based foods. Now remember, I serve my husband low-fat meals and I reduce his intake of all fats and oils. Oh, I don't want to talk about fat anymore. Reminding me of all the weight I have to lose. What was I saying? Oh, I was trying to tell you about what I can serve my husband. Now, let's see. This is what I do. I use lean, low-fat meat. I take the skin and all of the fat off of chicken. Now, my husband, he loves chicken. I bake, broil, or barbecue the chicken. No more fried chicken in this house. I only serve fiber-rich fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. I prepare foods and beverages with little added sugar or sweeteners. And I don't use a lot of salt. Uh-oh, the baby's crying again. Look, we'll talk soon, I promise. See ya.